Hello, and welcome to the SharePoint Framework, a JavaScript special interest group biweekly sync. It is April 23rd, 2020. Thank you all for joining the call today. So our agenda for today is the updates on SharePoint Framework. We've got the patterns and practices, updates from the program offerings, and then we've got three demos today, first from Alex, then Robin, then Hugo. Those demos might look familiar. They are the same demos for the last call, so we are hoping things go a lot smoother this time and we are able to deliver those demos uh, to all of you and to the recording this time. So fingers crossed on the technology keeping up with things. But before we get to that, a few quick reminders. So opportunities to participate uh, both in the Patterns and Practices program all up as well as this call specifically, uh, we really encourage you. We really like the demos. Uh, the demos are a really fantastic part of the call and uh, would encourage you because I know all of you out there are working on really cool stuff for your customers and your companies. So if you've got a neat modern SharePoint demo, something around SPFX, something using any of the at P&P offerings, or hopefully those things all together, would love to have you demo those on the call. So please reach out to myself or Vesa and we'll get you scheduled just as soon as we can. Please don't get discouraged if you can't be on like the very next call all that's coming up. Sometimes we're booked out uh, a, a little bit. So we will get you booked. We will get your demo on there and would love to have you. So please reach out uh, open to uh, anybody looking to demo uh, their samples, stuff from their customers. Obviously, uh, you know, if you've written stuff for customers, clear that with them that it's okay to demo, but would love to see that stuff. I always learn a lot from seeing those demos and seeing the great work all of you are out there doing in the community. So please do, uh, you know, reach out to us with those demos and we will get you scheduled. We also encourage you to contribute on GitHub. Those contributions can take a number of forms. You can report issues. Uh, we don't love hearing about bugs, but we do uh, love hearing about them so we can get them fixed. Uh, across all of our projects. Uh, please do report any issues you find, uh, as well report uh, ideas you have for enhancements, things you'd like to see uh, the different offerings do. Those are always great ideas as well. Uh, we, of course, uh, accept pull requests across uh, all of our uh, at PNP projects. So everything in the PNP org is absolutely open to getting your pull requests, either to uh, perhaps fix an issue, update some documentation, or even add new features. Uh, definitely encourage uh, any way you want to get involved to contribute. Absolutely welcome that. Um, and if you have questions about that, we do have a great uh, program, uh, Sharing is Caring initiative, started by David Warner on uh, how to how to get started contributing uh, to the PNP offering. So if you're interested and maybe a little unsure how to get started, check out that Sharing is Caring initiative. Absolutely. Uh, a great thing there. And then finally, uh, if you'd like to you know, have a little bit extra time, you'd like to contribute by helping with some of the open issues and questions, certainly encourage that as well. So you might know the answer to a question somebody else has. Maybe you've run into that problem before and you can help them out. That gets them an answer a little bit faster uh, than maybe waiting for somebody from the quote unquote uh, core team to get to that. Uh, so, uh, but everybody's been doing a great job helping each other. So that's awesome to see uh, the community helping uh, each other out. And then finally, we always encourage uh, you to give us your feedback. How are these calls? How is the documentation? Uh, where can we help? And of course, positive uh, feedback is okay too. So if you really like something we're doing, uh, that's great to hear because maybe we can do a little bit more of it. And uh, one note on the feedback, we love to get feedback uh, you know, around all the things, but the more kind of specific and constructive you can be with your feedback, the easier it is for us to action on it. So hearing uh, the documentation isn't great is fine. That's good feedback, but better feedback would be like on this documentation page, I feel like there's some missing details about some topic, right? Stuff like that really helps us understand uh, the issue and fix it a lot quicker. Uh, so links to all the SharePoint uh, stuff. So the first link there, spdev-docs, is to the all up SharePoint developer documentation. So that's whether you're getting started with SharePoint framework, whether you're looking for stuff on add-ins or even managed solutions, all of the SharePoint documentation is moving to that URL or has already moved there. SPDev-videos will take you to our PNP YouTube channel where you can see recordings for all of the different calls we do, as well as a bunch of great video series uh, around uh, different topics. So stuff around provisioning, stuff around PNPJS, stuff around the CLI, all our different topics. Uh, you can find videos on all those things there. Uh, and those are great places uh, if you're just getting started or even uh, if you're a little more experienced but want uh, to you know, kind of brush up on a certain area, great way to do that. 
spdev-issues is the uh, issues list to report uh, problems, questions, concerns with uh, modern SharePoint development. So that's the modern pages experience, SPFX, uh, REST API issues potentially there. Uh, that's a great place to put those issues if you find them. Um, and remember, that is the official SharePoint uh, issues list. So that's tracked by the product group. And those issues uh, can potentially turn into uh, real fixes in things like the product and SPFX as a, as a thing. So great place. Uh, if you do have feedback uh, on the actual, uh, not PNP stuff, but the SharePoint stuff, to report it there. And then finally, we have two uh, open source organizations. The first, github.com slash SharePoint, is the official Microsoft SharePoint uh, managed area. And that's uh, where all the official kind of things live, uh, samples. And we're working on getting all of kind of the community stuff moved to our github.com slash PNP, which is uh, our kind of PNP organization, which is more for the community built uh, and more uh, open source stuff in the sense that everything inside the PNP org accepts pull requests, we're taking your issues, and you can reach out uh, to all of us directly. So a little bit different uh, in those two organizations, but both are great resources to know about as a SharePoint or Office three, or Microsoft 365 developer. So check those out for sure. So this is now Vesa's updates for SharePoint Framework. Yep. Um, not actually SharePoint Framework specific as such. And uh, the first uh, few news from uh, Microsoft side, uh, we have today announced a new Microsoft 365 uh, patterns and practices team model with new community leads. And this basically relates on the uh, existing PMP model, which, was, which originates from 2014. Now we're growing the team, we're growing the model, and you can read more details from the blog post as well. Um, the following slide is really around the, the Microsoft Teams side of the house, or the Teams and SPFX, so making sure that everybody is aware of this one. Uh, yesterday, we released a new guidance video on how to build multi-tap Microsoft Teams personal apps with SharePoint Framework, and this is really kind of a concentrating on the area where if you need to build a complex Microsoft Teams personal application, how can you take advantage of SharePoint Framework in the UX, but still combine bots and all of that stuff uh, into personal apps as well. The video is 30 two minutes long if I remember correctly, but it actually works through the whole process one by one uh, and, and how you can make things happen. And it is actually getting quite a lot of views, so that's really good as well. Now, I did update the roadmap slide, uh, just each a bit so slightly. Um, uh, our main topics and my con main concentration areas within the short time frame, meaning within the upcoming months, is the SharePoint framework support in store and app storage. And we'll get more details on that one immediately when, when we get stuff moving. Uh, the Teams integration improvements, big thing as well, because we do absolutely acknowledge that Teams is decentralized uh, hub for anything, and, and having the integrations with SharePoint Framework and the development experience as optimal as possible is, is really our key objective. Uh, CSP uh, wasn't here mentioned. It's it's something which has been in the roadmap for a while. It's a content security policy, and this is something which we're now actively working as well within the short time frame because security is an important thing as well. And using the CSP, you can as an example, say that, hey, only JavaScript files from these kind of URLs are being accepted within my tenant. So if the, URL, if the JavaScript files are coming from somewhere else, it is getting automatically blocked. So it's an additional security and let's say feature, which will be added on the, on the Office 365 tenants. Unified tool chain, native support for Fluid Framework, still in the, in the loop back, faster in the loop means uh, faster builds. Uh, we've been actually having the 1.10 build now out for quite a few months, um, but due to COVID-19 situation, that's kind of understandable as well. More extensions coming up as well. No ETA currently for 1.11 or 1.10.1. We'll, we'll come back on the details as soon as possible. But that's it from my side. So I'll, I'll check if there's any questions on the chat and answer on those. Uh, so the PMP uh, JS client side library updates. Excited to announce uh, Julie Turner has agreed to take on a little bit of a bigger role. She's going to join Andrew and myself as maintainers for PMP JS. So you'll see her taking a little bit uh, more active role around merging pull requests and responding to issues and things like that. So very excited to have uh, Julie step up and do that. So thanks to Julie. Clap, 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 clap and uh, look forward to uh, getting her more involved and you'll be seeing uh, a little bit more of her around the PMPJS repository. So excited for that. Uh, we've got 205 release scheduled for uh, the 8th. So that's uh, what's April, May 8th. 
And uh, that's going to be driven by all of everybody's great uh, feedback there. So appreciate that. I know uh, there's there's some some issues have gotten open since the last release that looks like they haven't gotten dealt with. I know I and a lot of the other maintainers have been very, very busy uh, the last few weeks uh, dealing with a lot of uh, actual work stuff. So we will get to a lot of those issues for the 5.8 release. Uh, don't, don't worry about that. But uh, do appreciate all that great feedback. Keep that feedback coming, and we'll just do our, our level best uh, to get those things included. But of course, if you have a little bit of time and are interested, uh, absolutely welcome some pull requests to work on some of that stuff you know, as you have time and if you're willing to do so. Uh, as well, we've got the Getting Started uh, with PPJS video series, Understanding uh, Extension Methods video coming later this week. So excited to get that out and uh, published so everybody could see that. That's a, a part of the series David Warner has been doing around getting started with PMPJS uh, uh, or understanding some of the new features of PMPJS v2. So excited to get that new video out as well. Uh, pnp.github.io slash pnpjs for all your documentation needs. Hashtag pnpjs on Twitter. You can follow me at Mediocre Bowler on Twitter to get your pnpjs updates as well. Uh, Office 365 CLI updates uh, released a new preview version 2.9 with uh, support for removing Teams tabs, retrieving status of your Office 365 services, improved the SPFX project upgrade experience, and then as well some new sample scripts to help folks uh, get started there. Also, Waldeck is, uh, Wal sorry, not just Waldeck, that entire team. Uh, the CLI has a whole team uh, behind it, and they are all looking for uh, feedback around the SPFX doctor command. So if you tried that out, give that a shot. Uh, let them know uh, how you're feeling or, or what your thoughts are around that command. And uh, they're certainly looking uh, for your feedback there on a new feature. So install the latest beta version for uh, NPM, npm install dash g at pnp slash office 365 dash CLI at next. Uh, more information can be found at aka.ms 0365 CLI. And then as well, 0365 CLI on Twitter, hashtag uh, the Gitter channel, uh, their Gitter IM Office 365 dash CLI, and then uh, the docs, aka MS 0365 CLI for all your CLI needs. Uh, no big updates on the reusable components, but there's a lot of work uh, happening behind the scenes. So we've got the, remember, the set of React controls and the set of React property controls. So these are controls designed to help you build a, an out-of-the-box experience very quickly, uh, giving you the look and feel of a lot of great controls styled using the Office UI fabric, and uh, quickly drop into your projects and get both an enhanced editing experience through the property controls, and then through the React controls, a great uh, user experience either in your web parts or your application customizers. So great to see that uh, project continue. And I know there's a lot of work uh, happening behind the scenes, just nothing to really announce uh, this week. For more information, uh, sharepoint.github.io slash sp-dev-fs-property-controls gets you all the details on the property controls. And sp-dev-fx-controls-react gets you all the details on the body controls or the, the, the uh, content control set. There, So certainly check those out. Again, a great tool to have in your SPFX toolbox and a great way to jumpstart uh, your development uh, with not having to sort of build all these interface pieces yourself. So if you haven't checked those out and you're building React SPFX uh, stuff, absolutely uh, something to check out, see if it can help you out. I think it will. And then the Community Yeoman Generator. Uh, so Aurelia IO framework support has been added uh, to SharePoint Framework Solutions. So you can now add that as your uh, targeted platform right there in uh, as you create a new solution using the generator. And then upcoming features working on a reworked project creation process, uh, adding some support to React.js hooks. So uh, you create a new web part, it'll already be set up uh, for to support hooks, and then as well some additions uh, uh, Babylon JS as one of the uh, possible frameworks to include in your new web parts. And then uh, future support, looking for some help around Angular 9, uh, getting that support, getting those projects in as part of the generator. 
So if you have some expertise or interest there and would like to help out, uh, certainly please uh, reach out, jump in. I would love to have your help on the generator stuff. You can always install the latest version via npm, npm install dash g at pnp slash generator dash spfx. Documentation there, AKMS PNP generator. And then you can always chat on Gitter at the uh, channel listed there, uh, generator dash spfx slash generator, because anything with Yeoman, you have to have the word generator in it twice. And now I think Hugo is going to do our PNP SPFX samples update. I think so too. Okay, so uh, it's been a busy couple of weeks uh, with the with the samples. Uh, we've actually been uh, using Twitter and LinkedIn to promote these samples because the work that the people who are building these samples is is so amazing. It needs to be celebrated. Uh, under the SPFX extensions, uh, we have uh, an update to uh, a, a sample that Anub had built originally called My Favorites. To be honest, I completely forgot I had worked on that. Uh, the uh, On the SPFX web parts, we have a whole bunch of new web parts and some updates. Joao Mendez actually built two. One is called My Personal Apps, which allows users to uh, re record or register their own personal apps and display them. Uh, as well as the global news web part, which will uh, pull news from a news API and uh, show news from the region that you, you choose. Uh, I also added a new uh, web part sample called the version display, which is actually something that I borrowed from oh, George a few weeks ago. Um, it, it actually displays, or it's a very simple web part that shows how to display the current version of your web part both in the body of the web part or in the property pane. Uh, Joel Rodriguez updated his project online uh, web part, which connects to Microsoft uh, Project or Project Web Access. Uh, it's been upgraded to SPFX 1.10. And then Zach Roberts created a great sample. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very simple concept, but he actually did a great job at making it personalizable. It allows you to just show a greeting for the current user. So it pulls the user's information and allows you to personalize that. And then we have a bunch of uh, uh, updates. Uh, Harsha Vardini updated the bot framework. And Harsha was actually one of the uh, attendees to the sharing and scaring sessions. So it was great to see that, uh, that Harsha took the time to do her first contribution as an update. Uh, I updated the calendar feed web part, which is something that will pull uh, events from different feeds, RSS feeds, iCal, and things like that, and it displays it as if it was a, a SharePoint calendar. And finally, Daniel Westerdale uh, updated the Kanban board to, to fix some uh, Teams integration. Uh, the Kanban board uh, is actually uh, Daniel's first uh, contribution as a as a sharing and scaring attendee. Uh, and uh, the update was originally, or the sample was originally from Ran Prasad. So this is great to see uh, community members getting together and, and doing samples. There's a new issue type uh, called sample request. If you have a sample that you need, feel free to create a sample request issue. And I'm sure the, con the community will look at ways to help you. And if you want to contribute, uh, look for the help wanted tag or good first issue tag. And when we're going through this, the, the requests or the issues, we try to tag them to help people find inspiration. That's it for me. Back to you, Patrick. Awesome. Thanks for that update. And thanks for uh, the great work from everybody on those samples. Uh, it's exciting to see those continue to grow uh, and stuff get enhanced and new stuff get added. So uh, also great candidates. If, you, if you're working on samples, it's something you think to share with the community, just reach out. We'd love to get you scheduled on the call. So with that, I think we are on to our demos. So fingers crossed. Uh, Alex, are you on the call? And Yes, I am. Great. So uh, my demo is about how you can combine different uh, controls included in uh, reusable React controls for your web parts. And uh, today I'll show how to combine list view control with uh, field controls available in the repository. So uh, what we will be doing, we will be trying to display list view in the same way like standard uh, SharePoint list is displayed. So here I have a view, or uh, I have a list, let me make it bigger, where you have different types of columns. So we have text, we have date, we have uh, multi-lookup, we have choice, we have picture and uh, manage metadata. 
So uh, list view itself is a great control. It allows you to uh, display the uh, information in a similar way. It uses uh, in the back end, the in the background, the Office UI fabric list view details view control. But uh, the one problem with uh, this component is that it actually flatten your data. So basically, if you have something like a uh, uh, picture from SharePoint, right? So picture value contains two fields in size. Uh, your data in a list view will be will have like two different, two separate properties, like picture.url and picture.description. And uh, to avoid that, uh, we can use like field controls to do this stuff by our own way. So first step, what we need to do is we need to actually request the data from SharePoint. So here in my main code of the web part in, on init method, I'm getting all the uh, items from journalist that you just saw. And additionally, I'm getting uh, data from countries list, which is actually a lookup to one of our uh, fields, right? So when all the data is uh, uh, requested, we can go to our component as uh, itself and uh, when you're initializing the list view component, you're providing the items itself and you can provide view fields. View fields is basically an array of um, description what columns you want to uh, display in the list view. And basically for each view field, you can provide custom render method. And as you can see here, we are providing custom method for each and every uh, field in here. So we have render title, render date, render countries, experience, and so on and so forth. And inside these methods, we are actually using the components that are also provided by PNP reusable controls. So we have field text renderer that allows you to render simple text. Uh, we have field date renderer that allows you to render date. Uh, we have field lookup render that allows you uh, render lookup fields and it also allows you to uh, provide your own click handler, handler to uh, display some additional information about the uh, click lookup value. We have also field text render for simple uh, choice fields like in that case experience. For picture we have field URL render that renders either URL or picture based on is image URL parameter. And for journey, we have a uh, field taxonomy render that allows you to render uh, taxonomy values. And if I go to the workbench itself and uh, I add the component in here, PNP list view, which is the web part I just showed, as you can see, it's pretty similar to what we have here in the standard list. Uh, so we see the picture, we see all the values in here in the same way. And also if I click, for example, in this, on this lookup value, you will see the pop-up with the basic information about this uh, lookup value as well. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. You don't need to write a lot of code. Uh, you can just reuse some of the controls available in the uh, library, combine them. Yes, of course, you need to like massage data a little bit because as I said, for example, for um, URL, your data is flattened and in the item of the list view, you have uh, one uh, property picture.url, the second one is picture.description, so you uh, should kind of combine that or you can use uh, initial item as well, as well, for example, as shown here. In render countries, I'm not using anything from the item provided by list view, but in that, instead of that, I'm just getting the original item from the uh, props, and I can work with that as well. So that's pretty much it from my side, and I can answer some questions if there are any. I think we will take questions there in the IM window. Thanks for that yes. awesome demo. It's great to see uh, the super clean code uh, enabled by all those reusable controls. So really cool stuff. Uh, but I think uh, in the interest of time, I think we'll move on to Robin, if you are ready to go. Hi, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well uh, in these uncertain times and that everybody's staying safe. So my name is uh, Robin Achte, and I'm uh, an Office 365 and an Azure developer at Delaware. You can find my contact information here on the screen if you want to get in touch uh, later. So I'll be giving a short demo about a 
COVID-19 SPFX information web part that I built. I'll give a short demo and I'll also uh, explain some of the key features uh, in the code. So the goal of this web part was to inform the users of, uh, of my intranet about the corona situation uh, for a specific country. So it gives some specific statistics uh, and you also have the option to view an historical evolution. The data is coming from uh, an open source API, which is used, uh, which uses data from the uh, from the Johns Hopkins University. So let me dive into the demo. So I have a demo site collection here, uh, where I will add my web part. So I have the PNP reusable control here to configure my web part. There's only one uh, mandatory property, which is the ISO two country code. If you do a quick Google search on the ISO2 country code, you can easily find them. I use this code because it's also the code that is expected by the API. So if I put in, for example, uh, it seems that there is a, <laughs> a demo issue going on here um, and there's no data available. Anyway, um, you can put in here the to letter code of your country. We also have some uh, other configuration properties like a history button. If you enable this one, uh, I'll show it on the slide again. You get this icon here, which allows you to see an overview, an historical overview uh, in a graph form. We can provide an, uh, an optional link to view more statistics. Let me try and publish and see if we can get some data or if uh, we really have an issue. Okay. Um, uh, let me try and find correct uh, report uh, so I can show you the actual data. I'll show you it in the screenshot. Um, so here we have an example of the live data. So you see we have some up counters which dynamically count up um, and you can configure these up counts uh, also using this um, configuration slider. So you can define in seconds how long it takes uh, for the up counters. And then we also have a property pane reusable controls from the PMP initiative to let you uh, choose different colors for the three different statistics. Uh, so you can see for the three different statistics, we have some different colors. Um, you can define them also in the web part properties. Uh, so then let's get into the code. Uh, so we have the basic uh, scaffolding of our SPFX project um, with a main web box file. Uh, as you can see in the imports, we use the reusable controls for the property field color picker, uh, which is a very uh, nice tool to let you pick colors in your web art properties. Uh, yeah, and then we also have the other properties in here. Then in our component itself, uh, we use a lot of stuff from the Office UI fabric uh, library, so a model, icon buttons, and stuff like that. Uh, and also we have the placeholder control from the peer PNP SPFX reusable React controls. So uh, when the component is loaded, uh, we will actually load the data from uh, the open source API, which I've added into a Corona service in here. Uh, so you can see the URL of this API in here. We have two endpoints that we use. One is for the latest, where we actually get the latest statistics of a specific day. And you also have one endpoint for the time series, which gives us an array of all the historical uh, data for a specific country. Um, we use this uh, HTTP client Robin, project. Robin, from sorry, sorry, Robin, can it zoom slightly? It is really, really yeah, small. Sorry. Uh, so no worries, no worries. Everybody has four, 4K screens nowadays, so. <laughs> is this better? It's better, it's better. Or if you can go one more step, that would be even, even better. Yeah, sure. Excellent. Right. Thank you. So, uh, like I was saying, I'm using this uh, HTTP client provided by the SPFX framework. It's very easy to let you uh, query 
third party API tools. Um, it, so just using this client and this endpoint, you will get uh, a result from the uh, from the API, which we can then show in our web part. Um, so going back to the web part, uh, we use this count up control, which is uh, an open source package provided uh, on NPM, which just lets you uh, define an end number and a duration, how long it takes to do this up count. Uh, and another big thing we have in here is the model. So uh, let me try to show you uh, here. So if we click on this uh, historic icon, we get uh, a model where we can show graphs. Uh, so with that icon, we can get this model open where we can show graphs for the specific uh, statistics. Uh, so we have a, a model from the Office Web UI. Uh, library and the model itself uh, is more or less uh, the same. Uh, we also in here use a pivot control to have different tops for the different statistics. Uh, and we use this, um, where is it? The heat charts library, which is a very, very cool library, which lets you easily implement custom graphs in your React application. Um, so that's basically a very high level overview of what the component does. It's too bad that it's not working. Maybe there's a, an issue with the with the API because I'm not getting any data back. But anyway, if you go to the blog post, you, you can see it uh, working in action. That's it for me. Thank you very much, Robin, for that uh, very cool thing. Uh, obviously, a very timely demo on the kind of the stuff, uh, the data we can kind of show around what's going on in the world. Uh, and very cool as well, of course, to see the code and get uh, you know another perspective on just how to how to build these web parts and how to see usage for all those reusable controls. So really fantastic sample and demo. Thank you so much for that. Um, and finally, we've got uh, Hugo for uh, some adaptive cards. Thank you. Well, it's going to be, going to be a, a tough act to follow these two awesome demos, but I'll do my best. So my name is Hugo Bernier. Uh, you can find me on Twitter or on my blog. And today I'll be talking to you about uh, the adaptive card web part a sample that I created. So adaptive cards is an initiative by Microsoft that allows you to create uh, user interfaces that are you know, trying to really make the 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 host of where your your content is presented. Uh, so you can actually, as you can see on this on the screen now, uh, this is from the Microsoft uh, website called AdaptiveCards.io, and what they have here is they have uh, different the same adaptive card that's presenting in different uh, different hosts, so in Skype or in different things like that. I recommend you go take a look at this. Uh, but that's the web part that I'll be showing you today. The Adaptive Cards website has tons of samples. Uh, so you can see here it, what, what it does, it uses a JSON structure. In some cases, it uses a data structure as well. The cool thing about the data structure, it is pretty much any data that you get from any API. You can just plug it in uh, to the, 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 the uh, Adaptive Card. And then using your, your template JSON, you can decide how to find the path uh, to your, your data and you can present that data. Uh, so I'm going through here all the samples. There are some that are really useful, some that are not so useful, but it really goes uh, a long way to illustrate the, the, the richness and the, the breadth of, the, of experience, experiences you can deliver with the rich cards. The, uh, Adaptive Cards site also has a designer that allows you to create your adaptive cards. So this is me just, uh, I'm, I'll just update here one of the adaptive cards. Uh, you know, my flight is delayed forever because of this whole pandemic. Uh, but if I take this card now and I actually show it through different user interfaces, uh, you might notice that these experiences are very familiar because you're already using adaptive cards. So 
this is the web part. Uh, I like to create web parts that walk users through the, the process. So when you drop the web part, it says configure your adaptive card. And then uh, you have a choice here to pick a JSON uh, or submit a URL to the template. This functionality is actually something uh, that was uh, added minutes after I did my pull request to the samples repo by Paul Schaeflin. He actually added this functionality. It's, it's a great example of, again, community people getting together and just doing some, you know, contributing together to make things happen. Uh, so what I'll do here is I'll go to the uh, Adaptive Cards website and I'll, put, I'll pick one of the samples from the Adaptive Cards website. It's the first sample that shows up. Uh, for those of you who want to follow along at home, it's the first sample that shows up on the Adaptive Cards website. And as soon as I do this, you see that uh, it creates this web part here that's uh, you know, pretty simple. Uh, but the one thing that I did here is I made these adaptive cards uh, work. They're responsive. They'll work on whatever sizes you have, but they also work. Uh, they're designed to actually work on the background. Now, there is a little issue that I found with uh, the uh, strong backgrounds where the the buttons are the same color as a strong background. Uh, and that's actually something that I'd love to, to figure out if anybody's an expert in semantic uh, coloring uh, help me figure out how to do a good difference here between the background color and the buttons. Uh, but it's also theme aware. So I'll uh, I'll spare you the, the process of uh, going through the, the, the themes here. But if I change this to a different theme, uh, you would actually see that uh, it's actually working on the, you know, the black background, for example. Now, the other thing that I can do is I can take a different sample uh, that uses uh, data instead. So because what I've done in this JSON here, if I show you the template, oops, if I show you the template here, it should let me do this. Um, what, I'll, what I'm doing here is I'm actually creating a template that doesn't have any data. And what I'm doing when I detect it, you're using a, a, a template that doesn't have data built in. It's using the adaptive card templating features. Uh, I kind of give you a little tip here. I say go and configure this for you. So I'm actually going to turn on adaptive templating and then it's saying, hey, you need some data. I'm trying not to insult people here, but I'm always trying to help people figure out what's going on. So in this case, I'll just use some JSON that I extracted from. Uh, I can't remember where I got this from, but as soon as they plug this in, the data is actually coming in. Now, what I've also done is I've actually used uh, so if I actually change here the data just for fun to prove you that I'm not lying. Uh, so if I change this, this is actually Paul who helped me with this uh, web part. Uh, but I can also take some data from a SharePoint list or from a URL. So if I change the template here, this is a very boring template, but I'm just getting the ID, file name, the editor, uh, and then if the demo gods are with me, actually, you know what? I need to do this on this one. So give me one second here. I'll pick a list. Uh, so I'm using the documents list and I'm using a view uh, called the top five. And if everything goes well, it should actually be pulling the data from a SharePoint list. Now, Honestly, I wouldn't recommend you use the adaptive cards to create a list like this because we already have an awesome list rendering engine that does that. Uh, but if you wanted to do some you know, crazy user interfaces that are not possible to do uh, using the, the list templating uh, style, you can actually use the adaptive cards uh, to do that. And adaptive cards also support things like events. So I can I can have click events, I can have uh, submit events and, and things like that. Uh, the web part uh, supports that. And when I built this web part, and I'll show you the code in, in one minute, when I built this web part, uh, I actually designed it so that the adaptive card control is actually a separate control that maybe if, uh, if there's enough interest, I'll be submitting it to the uh, React uh, reusable uh, PMP controls. Uh, but I also added this uh, new property pane control, which is a view picker, uh, which I've also submitted to the, the React property pane uh, shared component library. 
So now if there's no questions, I'll uh, and I, I'm hoping that Patrick or Vesa, if there's any questions that are pressing, you'll let me know. But if there's no question, what I'll do is I'll go back to the code. All right. So the, the first thing to look at here is kind of the structure. And I like to take screenshots of my code just to help zoom in and, and do things like that. I hope you don't mind. This is real code, I promise. Uh, so the first thing is the adaptive card host web card itself. And really all it does is it's responsible for uh, for getting the theme and then calling the data if it needs to, uh, and then calling the adaptive card control that I've created. The first thing that we do if we want a web card to actually be theme aware is to just connect to the, the service scope to consume the theme provider service. And then the next thing we do is we extract the theme variant from the theme provider. And it it's not guaranteed that it'll always work. So it's important to uh, to do a try get theme. Uh, and in your code should always handle it, what happens if the theme is not provided. Uh, and then the, if you want the web part to redraw when your theme gets changed, it's important to have a, a, a handler for the theme changed event. In my case, when the theme changes, I just redraw the web part, but you could do any logic you want. And then when I call the adaptive card host, uh, you know, control a component, I pass the theme variant and it will be responsible for picking the colors it needs from the theme if there is a theme available. And then one last little trick here for the web part is uh, one of the things you may have noticed is I'm using a code editor control, which is available from the the, the PNP reusable property pane controls. Uh, but you know it's actually loading uh, a whole code editor behind the scene. And in reality, I don't need that code editor any other time than when I'm showing the property pane. So instead of loading it every single time when the web part loads, what I'm doing here is I'm using a, a, a method called load property pane resource. If you add this to your web part code, it gives you the opportunity to load uh, to load components, and then um, it'll only get called when the property pane is called, which is great. It's, it's one way to reduce the, the, the load on your web part. So that's what I do here. I kind of do an import, uh, an asynchronous import, and then I'll just create a control just before it's displayed. Now, in this case, what I do is I actually create a private uh, variable. I store that so that I can display it when I'm ready to show the web part. So on the component side, it's what I'm doing is not very exciting. I'm actually saying, look, if there's a, if there's no template, scream at people. Uh, if I need data, you know, be helpful and tell people, hey, you need data. Otherwise, just call the adaptive card control that I've created. And uh, what I do here is I have uh, a action handler. Uh, if uh, you want to handle again a submit or a click or something like that, I also pass things like the theme variant and things like that. And I'm sorry, I'm going through really quickly through the code here. I hope you don't mind. Uh, so the adaptive card control itself is the one that does the magic. And I'm actually using a library from the adaptive card team, and I've just added kind of flavors to make it work in within SharePoint. Uh, the first thing that I do is I just initialize a new adaptive card, and then I tell it to use the fabric components. This is not something I did. The adaptive card team actually built in this logic to handle using fabric UI, or is it UI fabric? I always get confused. Uh, and then what I do is I just say parse the card, uh, and the card gets the uh, the template and the data. One extra thing that I do is because adaptive cards are actually very markdown friendly, uh, and it does not uh, handle a uh, markdown in your adaptive card itself. But the the adaptive card uh, library does give you. Uh, a functionality if you want to handle markdown handling you can add that so in this case i use a library called markdown it which grabs the uh the, the markdown and renders html from it and then this is very cheesy but what i do is i grab the theme colors from the variant and i go in and i plug all the the host configuration for the adaptive card so that I get all the fancy semantic colors and background colors. 
there was one, the success text uh, that I found was not exposed. You know, normally I should be able to type semantic colors dot success text. It's actually not exposed like the other ones. Uh, I suspect it's a either uh, oversight on the on the semantic colors side or on my side. It happens. So finally, there's this one. You know, this is the bonus uh, feature, but the property field view picker. It's uh, it's that that thing that allows you to select a library, and once you've selected the library, it lists the views that are available to you. Uh, what I did here, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I copied and pasted the property field uh, list picker from the uh, React uh, reusable property pane controls, and I just added logic here to list the views instead of the uh, libraries. That's it for me. If there's any questions, I'll be checking the chat window. Um, back to you, folks. Fantastic. So another awesome demo. Thank you so much for that. Uh, very cool to see the adaptive cards and how they're being used. Uh, really excited for that. Thank you to everybody for joining the call today. We do have a little bit of time possibly for Q&A, but want to mention the recording will be available in 24 hours uh, on our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter as well. Our next SPFX call is going to be May 7th. Uh, that's in two weeks. And our next general development call is next week, April 30th. And look forward to seeing you all here then. And so, of course, remember, we've got all of our great uh, developer community call. There's a lot of different Microsoft uh, 365 developer community calls from different areas and different topics. And, and obviously, some of these happen in a monthly basis in the monthly calendar. Some of them happen more frequently. So our special interest groups are happening biweekly, but there's two of them. So every single Thursday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, there is a community call if you're interested. Everything is getting recorded. Everything is published in the YouTube. So don't worry if you miss any of the calls as well. And AKMS M365 Dev Calls is the one centralized location where you can actually go and get access on what's coming and what's happening. A lot of stuff is happening, at least. A lot of stuff. Feels like there's an opportunity to consolidate. Uh... No. <laughs> No, and to be fair, that's a fair comment since we do have a few minutes time. We did survey that and the answer was no, we don't want to consolidate. And that was like 89 for 80, 85 percent of people were saying, no, we don't want to consolidate. We want to have all of this thing as an individual calls, uh, which is a good topic to discuss also in Q&A. Now, uh, how many time people have? That's a good question, Alex. Absolutely agree on that. But I, I think it's more on having a, a specific recording so also to check rather than joining on every single call. I don't think everybody is accept, assuming that MVP as a community can join on every single call. Uh, it's it's really around the fact that they are targeted on a specific area. Now, we will be here for additional eight minutes. Uh, if there's any questions, rela anything related on SharePoint framework, uh, SharePoint, oh, anything on SharePoint Dev, I can I can talk about Onnit XMLs and farm solutions as well. Anything goes. I can actually even enable the video if, if that helps. Oh, let's, uh, so as uh, we are closing out, I do want to thank Alex, uh, Hugo, and Robin for the great demos Absolutely. today. Uh, fantastic stuff. And of course, if you are interested in demoing, uh, please just reach out to Vesa or myself, uh, myself being Patrick, and we will uh, look to get you scheduled on a call just uh, as soon as we can. Uh, so we do have some time for Q&A, uh, if anybody has that. Um, Will is asking related on the schedule on New Yammer. I expect it to go first half of 2020. I think it is, um, but I can't comment on that um, from my side because I'm not actually from the that side of the organization. Um, but I, we can pretty much expect uh, the announcement still to happen uh, around the SP plant, SPC built timeframe, which are both now going virtual. So, which is, is it uh, end of May? Something like that. So, we'll definitely have no up, uh, updates on that one. And there's nothing wrong with Onnit XML. Bob, trust me, I know. Um, there's so much wrong with Onnit XML. <laughs> <laughs> Those who do not know, that was the way we defined the site structures. Uh, here's a real question. What could I do? Where can I find information about what I could do in the property pane UI? A great place is uh, SP Dev Docs. Uh, you can check that out. And then if you have very specific questions, uh, always the issues list, uh, the SP Dev dash issues uh, will uh, help you find more information or get some questions answered around that. 
Uh, we're trying to migrate Box to SharePoint. And shared with me, web part in SharePoint will help. Is there any sample for that? Uh, I don't believe there's a specific sample uh, for that, but I could be wrong and uh, might be a great opportunity if that's something you need to write a sample and get that out uh, for other folks uh, who might need that. Uh, any update on file picker control for the property pane? Uh, I, I think there is actually one. Is, Hugo actually wrote. I think there is one, right? That's yeah. been released. Um, Hugo, I don't know if you could speak to that. I believe Hugo uh, I did it for I, reusable controls, not for the property pane, right? That's or, right. I, yeah. I did it for reusable controls. Actually, I didn't do it. I wrote the I wrote the sample, and then uh, someone in the community took it and created a, a control from it, which I, I love because I didn't have to do it. Right. Uh, it was it was first built to be a reusable property pane control. So maybe Alex and I can can chat after this and try to find a way to make it a property pane control. Uh, question then for Vesa there. Uh, any plans for Teams hosted app.aspx to host multiple web parts that could be connected? And no plans for that particular scenario. Now, now you could absolutely create a, a SharePoint page and then potentially expose that uh, in the in the team side. But that is a good point from Thomas. Um, I, I, it would get complicated to actually support multi web part scenario. We we do have stuff in our backlog to actually consider those options in the future, but will that happen? We'll see. That not in the it's not in the target right now, at least in the next uh, few months. So. Is uh, there a yet supported way to change the default fonts in SharePoint Online? No, not yet. In a backlog. I think we actually said that it's actually under development. So, but I think it's more on coming on the later part of the year. Uh, hot reloading using Site Workbench. It's super hot already, isn't it? No, it's just um, bad joke. Uh, so basically, uh, detect changes in the online workbench from the on-premises, and that's not in plans, at least for now. Uh, it, it would get kind of complicated to actually do that to technology, you know, technology limitations. So. Uh, best guidance for converting a provider hosted app to SPFX. That's too big of a topic to really answer uh, quickly True. on the call. True. That's, I mean, very that's specific actually, that's to what point. you're trying to do. Yeah, that, but, but uh, that I mean, I would start with nice analyzing. Yep, yeah, I mean, that's something to cover, but it's it's a big, that's a big topic. Uh, yeah. So that'd be great uh, for kind of a blog series or something like that, uh, doing the anal an ah, bleh, analysis there. <laughs> it's Thursday. Uh, it's fine. You get tired. So it's, it's what okay. are the planned SPFX extensions? Um, so we already a year ago, almost in SPC 2019, we talked about uh, navigation overriding. We talked about navigation node overriding. We talked about a few other additional options. And unfortunately, the having those extensions uh, available for you have been delayed uh, to numerous reasons, and the current situation doesn't help on that. Um, but it, they're still in a backlog, um, not going to happen within the next weeks or upcoming weeks, rather in the month scale. Um, and, and because that also requires then changes in the native out of the box pages rendering and all of that. So it's it's surprisingly complex thing to actually make that happen as a bulletproof future proven model. Uh, is Project Cortex going to affect SharePoint search? Maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fraud. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm going to do the Finnish answer. Yes. Uh, you know, so. <laughs> I like the American answer of maybe. Uh, I'll ask a self serving question. Would anyone use the adaptive card control if it was usable PNP control? I would say probably. Uh, folks, please do comment there if you have feedback uh, there. For SPFX CRUD, anything to consider besides my skills would choose you'd React CRUD, PNPJS CRUD, or Angular CRUD. I, I, I choose your poison. I mean, I, I think if it works for you, uh, you know, I think that's what you should use. Uh, specifically around a PNPJS, if you have feedback on stuff that would make it easier, we'd love to hear it. Uh, but I, I mean, I always say choose the tool that works best for you. Um, yeah. You know, if it's PMPGS, that's great. If it's something else, also great. Uh, use what works for you and works for your solution. 
Uh, can you also, that's not a question. Any way to access the files that need attention view uh, via code? Um, uh, I'm not personally familiar with that I view. Yeah. So I think uh, if it's a view, it might just be a query you could construct. Uh, you know, feel free to open up an issue in the SP Dev issues list uh, for some more details there. Uh, moving quickly, uh, how is it going with .NET Core CSOM? The discussions think, are underway, I, I, and yes, uh, we will see where that comes out. Yeah. Uh, uh, it SPSX is as painful for you as it is for us. So, uh, it's as painful for us as it is for you. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yes, all adaptive cards. Uh, Jim posted a big link. Uh, I, uh, scroll in too fast. Uh, Hugo, yes. Well, we are at the top of the hour, so I think we're going to close out there. Do want to thank everybody. Great fun Q&A here at the end, which we basically had time for, which we never do. The next call, May 7th. We'll see you in two weeks. Uh, next general dev call in one week on uh, April 30th, I believe I said. So thank you again to Alex, Hugo, and Robin for the fantastic demos. Thank you to all of you for joining us here today. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll talk soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.